Hi. Hi, it's me, Michelle. Welcome to this thing directed to people who are neurally divergent, but for everybody. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't have a name yet, but we'll sort it out sooner or later. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Bless up. Happy 15th Sunday in ordinary time. Whale, whale, whale. What a journey we're about to go on. Here's something really cool. You see, God created humans in his image and likeness. Surprise! It's like Catholic 101, right? And the thing is, because he's a genius, he gave us the tools to know him in how he created us, in our humanity. Before we jump in the readings, just to kind of get your brain where my brain is, I've been thinking about how pre the fall, talking in Eden, garden, visualize it, our whole body was perfectly oriented to God to have all that he wanted to give us, to perceive it, receive it, and enjoy it, and to flourish, and to grow. There wasn't any sickness. There was just our humanity. That was all we needed. That was the tool we needed to connect to Christ. And of course, things got a little bit effed up with the whole apple thing. After that, the, our tool that perceives God got distorted and was susceptible to all kinds of things that kept us from understanding and knowing and receiving his love for us. Never, 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 ever, never, ever, never, ever are we ever void of being able to share with God because we are one. He lives in us, we live in him. Our whole body and person is drawn to Christ and to that fullness like a magnet. And sure, 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 it could be a very dull magnet, but in your whole life, you'll never be fulfilled until you get that connection. And of course, you'll always want more because we are always capable of having more with him. How do we have this connection? Well, that's where the readings come in today, right? So in the beginning, in the first reading, Moses is talking about the law that God has given us. And he's telling the people, it's not far off. It's not mysterious. It is right here. It is in your day-to-day -day life. You might not have the mind to translate it or to really understand what's going on, but rest assured, your human instrument that God gave you is still capable of receiving his love. It happens in these ordinary mundane ways of your daily living. It's not fireworks. It's not something you don't have. It's not something you need to work to get. You just, you got it. It's God is present in your everyday ordinary life. Then in the second reading, we're on the same theme. In the very, very, very first line, it says that Jesus Christ makes the invisible God visible. So again, Jesus who came in humanity is creating that connection for us so that we who are already oriented to Christ can even more see who God is and perceive who he is and receive that fullness into our person. It's just your humanity simply qualifies you. So then we get to the gospel and it's about Samaritan. Well, okay, first it's about scholar who is talking to Jesus and then Jesus tells the slamming parable about the Samaritan. So you probably already know, maybe you don't. Samaritans are rejects by the Jewish people. They suck. But in the Good Samaritan, Story. It's named after our hero, the Samaritan, who, unlike the Levite and the priest, don't ignore the victim of robbers, but instead, moved by compassion, goes and takes care of him, makes sure he's doing all right, takes the time and the money and the effort to tend to his neighbor. Wow! Really fantastic. What did the Samaritan do? He did the duty of the moment, which was to take care of his neighbor. And that's quite an ordinary thing, but it's made extraordinary by the compassion of the Samaritan. All the more extraordinary because being an outcast still did this thing. And it's 
again, they're all human, and the human who did it was the one who's connected to God, who's living his ordinary life, and hurrah. That's super duper. Okay, let's talk. Because I was praying about these things, and I got really angry, because bone to pick with you, Jesus Christ, that's basically what I said, and he's always down for me to sort stuff out with him, and so this is what I was saying, is Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you, first off, for being God. Love ya. Also, mad at ya because you have given me this um, mm -mm, pain in the ass thing called ADHD. And ADHD isn't just, I have a brain and it's different from a neurotypical brain. It in fact is a dysfunctional brain where the connections and the wiring and the parts of the brain that aren't supposed to talk to each other are actually not doing the thing. With this orientation of mind that I have. There is a warpedness in my ability to perceive and receive God. I have to oh, struggle sometimes to get what many people get for free. And I think about that Samaritan and I think about how much I freaking want to be the Samaritan, but how often I can't be and how little that often makes me feel because who doesn't want to be the Samaritan? Tell me who wants to be the priest or the Levite? Nobody. But guess what? I feel like I most identify with them. That sucks. The thing about the Samaritan that really made me mad is that the Samaritan could help this victim because one, he had money, two, he had time, but three, most importantly, he definitely had safety. Homie didn't just stop in the middle of a panic. He had compassion and to have all of those things, you kind of have to have a very key ingredient, which is a feeling of safety. I said it already. If I had a feeling of safety in my life and also money and time, which those make up that safety feeling, of course I would be the Samaritan. If you have the resources, you do the thing. But I don't feel like I have the resources and so I feel like I can't do the thing, and if I can't do the thing, I don't feel like I'm doing a good job being Christian or being neighborly. Jesus Christ, my bone is that I feel set up for failure, and what the actual fuck? And I did get really mad, and I had a good cry about it, because there's such a feeling of loneliness and letdown and shame when you come head to head with this fact that you're not living up to the potential you feel that you have. It's brutal. After my good cry, I did get some some peace. I, I got I got actually a lot of peace. And so I'm really grateful about that. This is where I was led with it. The word neighbor is not the word stranger. I think about the stories I've heard about the most compassionate people to the homeless or people who have addictions, or other struggles. The people who have the most compassion are people who are similarly afflicted. The homeless take care of the homeless, and the addicted take care of the addicted, and the ADHD take care of the ADHD. This great sense of empathy is a very powerful force because it creates familiarity. Even though the Samaritan didn't know the victim from Adam, he did know him. They weren't strangers, they were neighbors because the Samaritan had been rejected. Remember this guy is not the priest, he's not the Levite and on this road from Jericho to Jerusalem, he was definitely not wanted societally. In that recognition of neighborliness, there comes the safety because it's familiar and you've been there and you know how you felt and you know what you would have liked someone to do for you and therefore you can do it for the other person. You can really foster this true and sincere feeling of love, and this connection, this humanity. Well, I just gave myself the goosebumps because maybe it's not true that I'm not the Samaritan. Look at me here, I'm talking to you people. You are my community and I am your community and so I get to serve you by talking about this with you and you are serving me by being present to what I'm saying and sharing with me on this journey. We're Samaritan, Samar Samaritan. We are being good Samaritans to one another. Hot dang. Now, um, does that mean that I'm great?
work for my ADHD? Yeah, in some ways, yeah. Uh, ultimately, it's a pain in the ass. I can't wait for the second coming and, you know, the full healing. In the fullness that he has to offer, I want it. I want it bad, and I'm getting it. And in the struggle and the journey, other windows are open. The grace can pour in through the cracks and the holes and the craters, if you will, of ugh, dysfunction. That's freaking cool. It's my ordinary life, this ADHD world I live in and this, this neurodivergent view of Earth. Christ is there. He's there. He's here. He's with me. He's in the shitter with me when I go there and he's in the, you know, the limelight when I'm there too. Those are my thoughts my natural orientation, it can get distorted. And that's why we keep coming back to community because like the Good Samaritan, we put each other up when we need to so that we can heal and get as much as we can while we're on earth. What do you think about that world? Pretty cool, huh? Thanks for joining me here. Thank you for being my community. Thank you for letting me be part of your community. Remember, you're not alone and that I love you. I will see you next week. God bless you. Bye.